Hello, everyone. I'm James Milan. Welcome to this episode of Talk of the Town. It's great to have you here. Um, our subject for today is re-precincting. Um, it is a process that is un ongoing as we speak. And uh, it is something that is, of course, related to the fact that every 10 years, a census is taken, um, uh, populations change, and where those populations are located in our town uh, change as well. And we need to make sure that our precincts reflect uh, those differences. A big concept that people are concerned about, and um, my guest today will be speaking to, I'm sure, consistently, is the idea of equity. Um, this idea of re-precincting, of either reducing the number of precincts, or I guess in some years you might add them, I don't know. Um, but anyway, changing that configuration is all about preserving equity and making sure uh, that it is a better situation for voters coming out of the new data from the census. Um, and those are the things that inform these decisions. All right. That's enough of an introduction, uh, and I want to apologize first to my guest, who is the authority here, uh, and that is our town clerk, Julie Brazil, um, and then also to the rest of you for, again, a typically lengthy introduction from James, but um, really wanting to set a little bit of, uh, of the framework uh, for our conversation. Julie, appreciate your patience, and thanks for joining us. I'm happy to be here. We really do appreciate it. Um, so I was mentioning that this is that the reprecincting is directly connected to census data that's just coming available. Uh, why don't you, though, um, you know, do a better job than I of uh, explaining what this process is, uh, how unusual it is to be considering the kinds of changes that we are this year, or whether in fact this happens every ten years, and you know it's par for the course. Sure. So um, I think, um, like a lot of processes, this one is um, specific to its time. Uh, we've had the same general map um, for 50 years. Um, the, every 10 years, we do go through the process. And um, the last two times, and uh, we in 20, uh, from the 2020, the 2000 census and the 2010 census, uh, we did move lines. Um, and when you move the lines um, and redraw the precinct boundary, um, you know that that changes uh, who votes uh, where, and you have to reelect all of your town meeting members. So you know it's a it's a substantial process. Uh, the last two times we did this and changed the lines, uh, it affected 13 precincts and 15 precincts out of 21. So. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, I mean, it, you have to go where, you know, the numbers and the data take you. I have introduced the additional wrinkle this year of recommending that we revisit how many precincts we want to have. We've had 21 for 50 years, um, and I'm sure it solved the problem at that time. Uh, the select board always makes the decision to uh, approve the number of precincts in the map. That's their job. Um, and, uh, but I do think that with the changes coming in elections with early voting in person and voting by mail, um, slightly expanding the size of our precincts can make elections more efficient and more flexible going forward. All right, yes, and I'm sure that we will hear more of that in, uh, further on in the conversation. But thanks for that you know, basic information that this, this structure, basic structure of 21 precincts here in Arlington has been the case for half century now. And uh, so in a sense, this is a, um, you know, a innovative um, idea. Let's put it that way. Uh, some people might say revolutionary. I don't know. Um, but actually looking at the changing the number of precincts is a relatively rare thing. Um, OK, let, let me uh, let me ask you. Um, where would, what are the options that you were considering? You were just mentioning mm -hmm. that, you know, one of them would be reducing and there are certain reasons that would, uh, would, would argue for that. Um, but if you can just kind of lay out what the different options are that you're considering and what, uh, what do you see as the respective advantages and disadvantages that pertain to those? Sure. Um, so yes, uh, 
the uh, I am re I'm recommending 16 precincts, so a reduction of five. Um, that number was arrived at sort of from a couple different sort of mathematical ways um, well before uh, we started you know, playing with the maps. Uh, we currently vote in eight polling locations. So if we had 16 precincts, each location um, would serve two precincts. Right now we double up uh, and triple up. And so some precincts actually uh, serve three precincts and that's a little unwieldy um, at times in terms of just parking and traffic flow uh, and confusing signage. Um, and then the, uh, the, there's a lot of math involved and this is very confusing for people. So I, I don't want to make it tedious this afternoon, but well, we'll, um, we'll use me as a test subject. And, and there you go. <laughs> if you're still awake at the end of this. Um, so the number of town meeting members is related to the number of precincts. The law says we should be aiming for 240 town meeting members. The number of town meeting members has to be divisible by three because we normally elect one third every year. So if you do the math, of 16 precincts and 15 town meeting members, then you get to 240 exactly. And I thought, well, okay, so mathematically 16 is a comfortable number, um, you know, sort of well-balanced. Um, so that was sort of how I got to 16. And then we started looking at, you know, the 16 precinct modeling and of course, keeping our same 21 precincts because you, know, you don't have to decide to make that change. Right. So um, what I gather is that, you know, it's math I can follow. So I appreciate that. And that is the fact that, you know, by reducing the 16 with those eight sites that currently exist, wouldn't have to change those at all. But instead, they would all be, you know, basically you could house two precincts at each site. And then it also would work out well in terms of, you know, having the right number of um, a, a, a number divisible by by three. In this case, it sounds like five uh, town meeting member in a 16 precinct Arlington, five mm -hmm. town meeting members from each precinct would would be elected each year. Uh, do I have that right? Yes, except for next year, we would yes. elect all of them. Um, so it would be a really big town election, um, despite the work involved in and the, you know, the confusion potential for, you know, for voters. Um, navigating that process. Um, I'm choosing to see it as an opportunity. Um, we often talk about how sad we are when turnout is low in a local election um, and having uh, the opportunity for every voter to choose all at once, all of their town meeting members um, is good. I mean, I think it's a democracy. Um, I think that's, that's an interesting process and we'll do everything we can to make that easy for people, but all of the people interested in running for town meeting would throw their hat in the ring and we would choose uh, 15 if we went for the uh, 16 precinct model. Mm -hmm. To be clear, if we move any line, um, and even if we were to keep a 21 precinct map, the same process happens. So um, if a line moves at all, then everybody gets reelected. Um, and so, uh, and given the way the 21 precinct map looks from the state, I think um, the vast majority of precinct boundaries are going to change. And so um, I don't really think we're saving ourselves any trouble by trying to stay with 21 precincts just to avoid that election outcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, obviously you're talking about, you know, whatever the, you know, whatever the, the, uh, the tumult is that could come, you know, on that particular day, you're talking about it happening once, which is in this first election after this uh, redrawing of the lines. And then after that, things will proceed um, yep. in, a, in a very familiar way, one way or the other. But let me yep. ask you, um, you were saying that in 2000 and in 2010, after those censuses, that, um, that, you know, 13 and 15, respectively, of the precincts were uh, were affected by those. Mm -hmm. And um, is it true the, then that it is only precincts um, which are affected where the lines do change um, that would need to reelect 
town meeting members from those precincts? Or is mm -hmm. it really going to be all the town meeting members from all the precincts, no matter what? No, it only uh, you only reelect everyone if the line moves. Um, and so um, and so it, over the past 50 years, um, I, I looked it up. I'm pretty sure three precincts have never gone through this um, joyous exercise. Um, they've just uh, chugged along um, electing their there for every year. Um, uh, and I, I kind of want to, that helps me segue into uh, thinking about equity, um, because that's, um, that's a very different experience um, between precincts. And um, that's one of the things that we considered um, as a re-precincting working group got started. Um, is there a virtue in trying to, um, you know, save two or three corners of Arlington from, from going through the same experience. Um, and, uh, and I have a, you know, sort of a number of thoughts about that, um, that, that we can explore. Um, yeah. I think that equity has such different meanings, um, or it, it can, yeah. it can be applied in so many different ways in what we're talking about here, equity between yeah. precincts, equity within precincts, equity yeah. within populations, within precincts, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So let's kind of, um, just establish what what the terms are uh, as you are um, as you are referencing equity. You know, mm -hmm. explain to us what you mean by that. Sure, uh, I, I want to start um, actually with um, sort of the the official charge um, that we're given under state law. Um, everybody gets the rebalancing of the number of residents per precinct, um, but we're also called on to look at. The demographic data um, and redrawn precincts and ward boundaries must not result in the dilution of minority group member votes and the voting rights act prohibits any voting practice which results in a denial or abridgment of the right to vote on account of race or color or membership in a language minority group so we really did start when we sat down um, with that you know, sort of very clear understanding that we needed to look at uh, the demographic data that we had on residents and be sure that we were being um, as equitable um, as possible using as many different ways to think about it as possible. There's the pure demographic data. Um, uh, when you have the mapping software lets us uh, uh, look at the lines um, sort of with underlying data so we can look at distribution by race. We can import information from the assessor's database and look at distribution of uh, people who own versus rent. Um, uh, we can estimate household income using American Community Survey data from 2019. So if we do all of that, it allows us to get a pretty good picture of, um, of where to put the lines. And is, is the goal there in terms of equity to maintain some kind of demographic character of uh, precincts, or is the goal to make them all as close to evenly, uh, you know, mat like evenly matched or, 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 or comparable um, right. in the various ways that you were just saying, income and, and ha you know, own right. versus rent and racial and ethnic diversity, et cetera? So, um, well, the goal is to um, is to not dilute any minority subgroup, um, and and so what that means as a practical matter is, um, if if all of the subgroups were evenly dispersed, then we would strive to have each precinct have the same profile. But since they're concentrated um, geographically on the map, we need to make sure that if we see a cluster um, that we want to keep that cluster together rather than accidentally drawing a line that carves just a corner off, leaving them very different from the rest of um, the precinct that they're now in. Um, conversely, if we had a very large spread of, uh, of a characteristic that was too big to encompass in one precinct, we would want to put the line um, as evenly as possible so that the two resulting precincts have um, 
have sort of equal weight in, mm -hmm. in that in that uh, so that we're not what we're trying to do is prevent um, minority voices voices from being overshadowed. Um, you know, a town meeting is a representative thing, and so if if a very small section of a precinct has a different opinion about uh, a decision that town meeting's making, their voices might get lost. Um, and so that's our goal, is to make sure that we're, um, we're not uh, dividing things up in such a way that voices get lost. Well, I probably don't need to tell you, you this at all, but that sounds like a lot of needles to thread. Yeah. Um, yeah. All kind of inter you know in kind of entwined as well with each other and overlapping yeah. um does the 16 precinct model help you do that uh any better actually um it does we uh we drew both a 21 precinct map from scratch just to go through the exercise um and we uh drew a, the 16 precinct map from scratch um, and yes, the reprecincting working group felt that the 16 precinct model worked better um, for a number of ways. In a number of ways, we um, the slightly larger precincts um, it was easier to envision uh, polling locations that were sort of uh, better situated in uh, in the sort of pairs of precincts. Um, there is always a question that comes up about transportation. Um, somebody's always going to be farthest from the poles, and um, and you, you can't help that. Um, mm -hmm. So we definitely want to be sure that we're being thoughtful about um, where um, where the possible polling locations could be. To be clear, the select board can always change the polling locations. You know, the map is set for ten years. We can move out around the polling locations to solve problems. Um, in general, from an equity standpoint, though, it would make makes more sense for us to have the polling locations closer to transportation spines. Um, if you have all of the polling locations in our um, in the in the schools that tend to be sort of in the leafy uh, suburbs, um, those people probably, on average, have cars and could drive into the center. Um, a long, to a, a polling location on the central spine. So, you know, we, we are sort of, you have to think about a lot of different um, at angles. Um, we thought about it from the, um, from the perspective of, um, you know, sort of that, that question of, of uh, do you make everybody, if you move to 16 precincts, then obviously everybody goes through electing their town meeting members. Um, and that's, um, that's of course equitable because everybody has the same experience. A couple com comments um, raised an interesting uh, consideration for us, and that is um, some people are like, well, you shouldn't do that because it's expensive to run. But if it's expensive to run, then that actually argues for making sure that every precinct goes through the same experience. If you were to isolate three or four precincts in a 21 precinct model and say, well, you guys don't have to do it, that's very inequitable um, because those people don't have the same outreach issues as everyone else. Um, I also, so, and, and there's been a lot of thinking and, and talking about that. There was a comment specific to that where someone said, um, it is expensive to run and I think the town should, should look for ways to remedy that. But in spite of that issue, I support the 16 precinct option. Um, so it's nice to know that people are, are really thinking about it, um, you know, the same way that we are, that's always nice. Um, and, um, and so, I mean, I think we have to look at solutions. One solution that I have been exploring would be to address some of that equity issue for campaigning by setting up a system where all candidates for town meeting can um, submit written statements that, uh, that we can publish. Um, volunteers have been doing that um, on the League of Women Voters website. I would like to be able to do it on the elections page. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, and I'd like to build it into our process so everyone gets the, the same form and invitation at the same time. Um, and I think it encourages more participation, um, which is good. Uh, incumbents should introduce themselves um, to their precinct every time they run, just because new people move into the precinct and, and wouldn't know them. So I think the more we build that habit in, um, and can provide that service, um, that would be great. It raises, of course, campaign finance issues, so I'm talking to a lot of lawyers, but I, that's a goal. I would like to do that. 
in order to sort of address the um, equity uh, in campaigning, um, give everybody a level, a level playing field um, to campaign from for free. Yeah, you know, we had said uh, at the outset that equity was going to kind of permeate uh, this conversation in, in, in a lot of different ways. And uh, that's that's yet another one, what you just spent a couple of minutes on that hadn't, mm -hmm. I have to confess, initially occurred to me, which is, of course, equity and campaigning, equity for those who wish yeah. to represent uh, their fellow precinct members at town meeting. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to think about that as well. It's a very important right. Consideration. Um, yep. I want to just take a, a second, though, Julie, and take yep. a, either a step back or a step aside, you know, and just ask you, you've, re you've referred a couple of times now to the study committee. Uh, mm -hmm. And I can't remember exactly what the official designation of the group is. But anyway, the, the group that is kind of been looking at this and really mm -hmm. working at it in, in the way that uh, such such work happens here in town, usually. Mm -hmm by a lot of volunteer energy, et cetera. Um, but anyway, who is, what is the makeup of that study group and how much of a representation from, you know, uh, the, the Arlington citizenry is, mm -hmm. is on that group? So the reprecincting working group is, um, is uh, what we're calling ourselves. Um, it starts when the uh, Secretary of State's office, uh, the division that's managing this process uh, contacts the town clerk and says who should receive our emails um, when we have the data um, to communicate with you on, on the mapping process. So I talked with the town manager. Um, the town clerk is almost always um, sort of point in this process. Um, we, of course, uh, invited Adam Kurowski, our uh, wonderful and very experienced um, mapping expert, our director of GIS. Um, he's, he's retired. Um, in the middle of this process. Um, however, he's uh, staying on uh, on a part-time contract basis to help get us through this process because it's, um, it's important um, to the town and, and important to Adam. Um, Kelly Linema from planning. It's very helpful to have input uh, from the planning department um, because one of the things that we get to play with as we rebalance the population numbers is if there's a an area of town where we expect there to be new residential growth. Um, it's a good idea, not required, but a good idea to have that precinct be on the lower end of the range so that they're not wildly out of balance in 10 years um, from the rest of the precincts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then it occurred to us since um, equity was clearly um, key to the effort and uh, something we felt really called to do, we invited a Jill Harvey, Arlington's Director of Diversity equity and inclusion. Um, and she brings um, you know, more information and more perspective, uh, more resources um, to the conversation. And so we felt like the four of us could um, pull together the information. Uh, technically, we're working um, for the select board since they are the ones making the final decision. But this is such a big process and that community input is so important um, that we definitely invited um, every resident to weigh in um, with their perspectives and their um, recommendations uh, on, you know, sort of places on the map that we should really look at where, um, where we might, where we need to look at the underlying demographic data and make sure we're not dividing a group um, awkwardly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, okay, so the working group itself is four people um, mm -hmm. from different levels, understandable of, of town government, you've explained well. Uh, what contributions they would make to that. Um, so then I imagine you need to go through the same process in terms of soliciting uh, community input um, mm -hmm. as other departments in town have to do yeah. around different things. The planning department you know, comes to mind with all the mm -hmm. plans they have. Um, so I would imagine, I, I believe in fact that there's a forum, a community yeah. forum probably coming up in, mm -hmm. The goal of which uh, I'm sure, at least in large part, is just that: is getting a sense of of what people's uh, what mm -hmm. people's reaction, and feelings, and feedback are uh, yeah. about this. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. So on the elections page, we have a link to the reprecincting process where we're sort of collecting as much information as we can. Um, it announces the dates of things like the forum, which is next Wednesday evening, uh, September twenty second. 
It's a Zoom form, um, and it's being uh, hosted by the League of Women Voters of Arlington and uh, volunteers from the Election Modernization Committee. Uh, and it's a chance for people to um, ask some questions um, and then break out into small discussion groups and really dig in to, um, to the perspectives. I think it's what's important is as we're looking at these comments come in online, um, we have, uh, there's a, you know, so for every person who says, I think 16 doesn't make sense. Somebody else is like, I've never thought of 16, but that's brilliant. So, you know, it's, it's great to hear um, all of those perspectives. Um, and, and it of course tells us when uh, there are questions and confusions that we can try to clarify. There are videos on the webpage. Um, we have a 12 minute video um, that I prepared explaining um, what I mean when I say more flexible election. Um, and we, there's a lot of election reform that I, I think Arlington really wants, uh, and it's easier to do with 16 precincts. Um, so I wanted to talk about that. And then Kelly Linema, uh sort of walks everybody through the process, um, a, a little more detail looking at the maps and how we created them, both 16 and 21. Um, you know, sort of the trade-offs and pluses and minus uh, from each. So there's a bunch of information that people can um, can explore. And then, of course, I think the forum will be very helpful for people who want to um, talk to their neighbors and and uh, and you know, sort of think about real-world impacts. So when does this all come down, Julie? Uh, as in, you know, what is the timeline for when this this decision needs to be made? Sure. Um, the select board has to take a vote to finalize the map and the entire submission packet by October 30th. Um, and uh, but in you know sort of any time. Uh, I got the data files, the official census data files, um, uh, Monday afternoon. So hopefully in the next few days, we'll uh, dig in and see uh, how we need to adjust the draft maps. And then we'll present those again. I, of course, have to do that in coordination with the select board. Um, and, uh, uh, and so there was a hearing on Monday and those on the question of 16 versus 21 precincts. The select board wanted to just think about that, uh, the sooner they can feel comfortable deciding that question, um, then we can really fine tune, um, fine tune one map um, really well. Uh, so keep your eye on the reprecincting links uh, on the web page. There's sort of, it'll be constantly updated. There's a fact sheet, um, you know, there's, there's a information and, and more, um, and it changes, you know, every few days. So we encourage people to keep, keep it. Keep an eye on it. Um, there's a Google form if people want to submit information online. Um, you can print just the PDF on regular um, letter-sized paper from home if you have a printer, and um, and you know just sort of circle a neighborhood and say, "I'm really worried about this," and um, then you know drop that off at town hall or send us a photo, uh, email us a photo of that page, and we'll we'll include all of that data. The the data from people, you know, sort of block by block, neighborhood by neighborhood will help us fine tune. Um, we might think it makes perfect sense to put a line there because the um, the data we get is in census blocks and it, you know, that it's not as small as um, as maybe people are aware of, um, you know, the situation in, in, in their neighborhood. So we definitely right. encourage people to take a map and say, worry about this location. Um, and then whatever version of the map we're doing, we'll have that neighborhood in mind. Right. It's like local, you know, very, very local scouts, the people who know yep. Uh, yep. these things the best, kind of sharing that information with you. All right, mm -hmm. Julie, I've got to give you your due. Um, you know, w before we went on air, I said, well, we have up to half an hour and that should probably be enough. And you're like, I'm not sure. There's a lot to cover here. And mm -hmm. uh, you we're right because we're right up against the half hour and I'm sure we yep. could keep going. Um, sure. We are going to have to call it uh, here, and certainly I think there's plenty of good content uh, for folks to digest here. And I'll just ask you, remind people one more time how it is that they can either get more information or provide uh, their own feedback uh, as succinctly as you can, and then we'll sign sure. off. So on the, um, on the reprecincting um, page, it, you know, it's a link on the elections page. Uh, then there's social media has been linking it. Um, there are, there's instructions. We can accept uh, written documents that you mail or drop off at town hall. 
Uh, you can email us uh, written comments. You can email us a picture of a map. You can use an online Google form um, and just write your comments. Um, say, you know, this neighborhood um, has a lot of um, people who share the same interest and keep an eye on that. And then we'll, we will present all of that information to the select board so that they're aware of it when they make their final vote. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, it has been a most informative half hour for me to digest, and I'm sure for the rest of our audience as well. Uh, complicated stuff, and yep. glad that you're glad it's your problem and not mine. Uh, yeah. But no, really appreciate you know how how hard it is to kind of, as I mentioned earlier, thread all these needles. Um, we look forward to seeing what the uh, what the end results of all of this is. Um, mm -hmm. I have been speaking on the subject of reprecincting with our town clerk, Julie Brazil. I am James Milan. This is Talk of the Town. We sure do appreciate Julie taking the time to explain this complicated situation to us as best she can. And we appreciate your time uh, that you've given us in tuning in. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us.